So of all videos, why is this one not a drinking video? Because I'm in the office on my own and my job's already fucking depressing enough as it is. <laughs> At the moment, it's fun most of the time, but not when there's a virus. Stay inside. There's no such thing as being too paranoid when it comes to a pandemic. Now I just flipped off the camera for that one guy. That's a message for him. That's for you. That's for you, random dickhead who messaged Nisha on Twitter. You're being too paranoid about something that's killed hundreds of thousands of people. Wow. Every year on July 31st, sailors across Britain take part in a time-honoured tradition that stretches back hundreds of years that the government put a stop to in the 1970s, with said celebration consisting mostly of getting really, really drunk on rum. Okay, to start with, what is this tradition of sailors drinking rum? Uh, well, in the British Navy, it's a tradition that goes back many hundreds of years to a time when it was very difficult, if not impossible, to store water on ships for any length of time and as a result made seafaring journeys that crossed entire oceans kind of difficult. And a solution uh, the British Navy found to this was to, instead of taking big barrels of water, which had a nasty habit of going stagnant and turned fetid, which would, well, kill sailors, they instead took large barrels of beer. So what makes taking beer better than water? Because beer is sterile due to the fact that when you're making beer, you boil the water that you use to make it. You might think, well, that sounds like a bad idea because they'd just be drunk all the time. So it's point out they drunk a very weak beer. And it's only now with the gift of hindsight that we can see that, oh yeah, the process of making beer in which you boil water is the reason the beer was safe. Well, yeah, now I think about it, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, and it was great for like sailors and stuff because it means they got to have a drink every single day. And that's where um, the stereotype of the drunken sailor comes from because by necessity they had to take beer on long journeys. Um, I should point out it was very weak beer but you still were required to drink quite vast amounts of it to get your daily ration because they were rationing out the beer. Uh, the problem was though that British sailors um, kind of didn't like the beer especially in tropical climates because um, as anyone who drinks beer knows that there's nothing worse than a weak beer except for maybe a warm beer. So now imagine oh, yeah. a warm, weak beer that's been sat out in the sun and has been just left to just go just a little bit off. All right, so where did rum come in? Uh, rum came in when the British Navy um, started traveling with some regularity to the Caribbean and rum was made over there. And they noticed that not only did rum not have the problem that beer did of just going off when it was exposed to harsh sunlight, in fact, it tasted better. Okay, so a fun fact about rum is that the longer you leave it in the barrel, the sweeter it gets. And because of this, the British Navy just began acquiring rum in mass quantities to store aboard ships because it could be kept almost indefinitely. And as I mentioned, the longer the journey was, the sweeter and stronger the rum would become. Well, obviously they're using rum to survive. So how much did they yeah. have to drink every day? Uh, well, every sailor was given half a pint of rum per day as part of their rations, which sounds like a lot of rum, but not a lot of water. So something that the Navy would do is mix the rum with water, creating a drink known as grog. So if you've ever heard the word grog um, used in fiction, that's what it is. It's rum mixed with water. Uh, but the problem with doing that was you're still giving your sailors the equivalent of half a pint of rum every single day. And because of this, drunken fist fights aboard British naval vessels became something that was alarmingly common. Not surprised, to be honest. So what the Navy did in response to this was water down the grog more and give sailors a smaller rum ration per day. But the problem with that was is that sailors would just save up their rations and have them all at once <laughs> and still get drunk. Uh, so eventually it got to the point where they were giving them like basically a quarter of a pint of rum, like heavily watered down. Because um, if you poured the rum into the water, it not only made it more palatable, it also helped it remain sterile and drinkable. Yeah, I really like sweet spirits anyway, so I can imagine I would enjoy that. <laughs> just like, I can just see Nisha now. Nisha is the drunken sailor with a half pint of um, overproof Caribbean rum. It's like, fucking hell. Have you ever tried like proper Caribbean rum? No, I don't think so. I've only uh, ever had that Captain Morgan spice rum and that was all right. Ah, okay. Well, um, an old friend of mine in university and his grandma was from the West Indies and she would make um, bathtub rum with uh, bananas and plantains and it was like 60-70% and it was the nicest thing I've ever had. Like you'd open it up and it, ju it just, you could smell it and you could just hear 
the lilt ladies in the background just dancing in the, in the Caribbean, like, oh my God, yes. And then I mixed it with that Levi Roots Caribbean crush, if you remember that. Oh God, yeah. And I just took a sip and I went, I am now in Cool Runnings. This is the best thing ever, I love it. It is fucking awesome. So yeah, the main focus of this article is that people got drunk. Yes, and that was a problem for the British Navy. And as time went on, uh, the ability to store water wasn't really an issue anymore. So the rum ration, as it was called, became more of a tradition than a necessity. However, around like the 1960s, um, MPs uh, in the British government start to question, is it really a good idea to give our sailors rum? You know, the people in charge of literally billions of dollars of military hardware. Uh, because even when the rum ration was no longer required, British sailors around that time were still being given two shots or tots of rum per day. So what the British government did is slowly phase that out, which understandably sailors across Britain didn't like because it was a centuries old tradition at that point and rum was so synonymous with the Navy and sailing as just a nautical pastime. But why is the rum gone? Right, so I'm guessing this has got something to do with July 31st. Yes, because in the 1970s, on July 31st, that was officially the last day that the British government um, allowed sailors to have a tot of rum as part of their daily rations. And many sailors across Britain took that opportunity to literally hold funerals for their rum. <laughs> Uh, because up to that point, um, like on many ships in Britain, they had ceremonial rum casks um, that would contain all of the rum to, for the rations for the time they'd be at sea. And sailors used the opportunity on July 31st to get absolutely hammered on that rum, after which they took their shot glasses and ceremoniously buried them in the ocean by which I mean drunkenly hurled them into the waves at like midnight and then got their barrels and some ships took it more seriously than others and some like they went the whole hog and gave the barrels proper full burials at sea with all the honours and like played like pipe music and everything like that. Others just dumped them overboard and like nah man I'm gonna miss having that rum. I'm just imagining that scene from How to Train Your Dragon 2 where, okay. spoilers, Stoic dies and then when they oh, give man. him a funeral they send him off to sea and then they shoot the flaming arrows. I imagine that's oh, what yeah. the sailors would do with the alcohol. But then it explodes because it's rum. <laughs> it's just, oh god, maybe we should have done that. Or it lands in the ocean like a whale eats it and then the whale's drunk. You're like, oh no, drunk whales. That's dangerous is that, and I can uh, speak a little bit more to this because my granddad was in the Navy and um, every year when we'd visit him, we'd visit him around this time and we'd go to, uh, they call it the Black Tot now, um, it's a naval tradition, like the Black Tot every July 31st, um, sailors, uh, past and present, uh, will meet up um, to just drink and share stories. And my dad to this day, because my granddad's unfortunately passed on, will go in his stead and raise a small tot of rum on this day. And something that I like doing every November 11th is um, when my granddad passed away, um, there was a small collection at that year's uh, Black Tot event and they used it to get a, um, a big bronze elephant casted. I think, oh, what's the deal with it? What's the connection between your granddad and this sick bronze elephant? He was, he was a stationed aboard the HMS Ganges, um, of which I think their colours or their flag had an elephant on it. So they had this big bronze elephant cast and every year during the November 11th Remembrance Parade um, they will put that big bronze elephant, Sam's elephant they call it, after my granddad on top of the big pole and carry it. So when I watch that I look out for the elephants, that's my granddad's elephant. Oh, that's nice. Granddad's elephant, right there. So if you happen to be watching though you can try and spot my granddad's elephant and then have a massive shot of Romans get hammered because that's what he would have wanted. So I, I do it as well because I was too young to ever like, actually enjoy the black top. And then when I got to like 18, 19 years old, I'm like, I'm gonna fucking get hammered every July 31st. Why? For my granddad! It's what he would've wanted. Oh yeah. But to bring it back to like sailors in Britain today, um, it's not all bad because while they did have their rum ration taken away, uh, as a commiseration of sorts, the British government did allow the Navy to start giving sailors a second beer with their lunch instead. <laughs> so they're still having like two beers at lunch. Oh. <laughs> so they're still drinking. <laughs> yeah, these people in charge of the nuclear fucking missiles, man. I'm terrified now. 
God, they're doing a bit of building work outside, so I don't know if the mic's going to pick it up. Oh, God, yeah, I had that yesterday. Um, me and Lucas were recording some Spider-Man. Yeah, we're playing Spider-Man PS4 on my channel. Um, links below. And um, my PS4 just sounded like it was taking off. And at multiple times during the recording, I had to like, just move my microphone to the side and just apologise. I'm sorry if it sounds like the Shield helicarrier is in the background. <laughs> it's like, I can't help it. The PlayStation is just absolutely... It's going Super Saiyan 2. I can't help it. It's awful. Oh, it's fine. Adam's PlayStation takes off occasionally as well. Oh, it's crazy, isn't it? Like, the loudness of those devices. So I miss... Like, my, I remember my PS2 when I was a bit younger. And I'd like turn it on at like 11 o'clock at night when I was supposed to be in bed. So I'm going to play some Crash Bandicoot. And then you just hear the... And it just sounds like the fucking Starship Enterprise. It's just like whirring up in the corner. I'm like, no, no, no. And then you've got to do the classic of you get like your dressing gown and you put it under your door frame so they can't see the, your parents can't see the light coming out. <laughs> you ever do that? Nope. And I was playing PlayStation all day, man. Can't stop me. <laughs> I went to bed. I didn't. Fuck that. <laughs> I went to bed when I was meant I to. I still think like, I remember absolutely shitting my pants because um, we somehow acquired an old black and white TV. Um, that was in our room because we didn't have enough money to have a TV in our room but then one that said we acquired somewhere a black and white TV and I remember staying up one night and Jaws was on TV and I watched it in black and white and it's fucking terrifying oh, wow. Jaws is so scary in black and white I don't know why being in black and white maybe it's so much scarier dude I think yeah oh god since the topic of today's conversation was like sailors and stuff I'm wondering how often they play that theme song to scare people Doing diving exercises or something like that. Start playing over the microphone, just some Jaws. I just had that song called What Should We Do With A Drunken Sailor stuck in my head the entire video. Oh, yeah. Well, people might wonder that's where that comes from. And well, the reason that stereotype exists is because by necessity, sailors were getting crunk every single day. Because the only way to ensure you could survive a long journey was to take alcohol on board. Because it was the only thing that was sterile. Also, if they've been like drinking a lot the day before and then wake up with a hangover, they could just carry on drinking because it's meant to cure it. Oh, God, I cannot even imagine a hangover on the ocean. On the ocean, when you're in like the tropics, can you imagine waking up with a rum hangover? And the next, and then you go outside and it's the blazing sun on your head, and it's like, oh, what have I got for my breakfast? Here's some cornflakes and rum. And you're like, oh, have your beerios, Carl. I was like, no, I don't want my beerios. I like, eat your beerios. Now. Well, they say the way to get rid of a hangover is just to keep on drinking. Now, hair of the dog is the one solution I found. It's the because it keeps you drunk. It also takes the edge off. But man, fuck it. I, oh, God, that'd be awful. Waking up with a rum hangover. What's a breakfast? More rum. Ugh. 